want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel better spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please like and comment below. If you are ever in the Nashville, Tennessee area, we would love for you to be our special guest and you can visit our website for service times and events.
church. We are honored that you have chosen to join us tonight for this worship, to join us tonight to hear the word of God. We thank you, for, Heavenly Father, for the worship of tonight. We thank you for bringing these people together in this hour to serve and worship you. Amen. When the doubt in my way tries to steal what you save, saying I have no reason to praise, I will give thanks. Oh, I will give thanks. Oh, and the roar that I hear is the voice of my fear, trying to silence this hope in my heart. I will give thanks. Oh, I will give thanks. A song of thanksgiving is my battle cry. With joy as my weapon, I'll stand and defy the lie of the dark with my hands lifted to the sky and I will read It seems it's too late. Hope is buried and dead in the grave. I'll speak your name. Well, I'll speak your name. Oh, song of thanksgiving is my battle cry. With joy is my weapon. I'll stand and defy the lie of the dark with my hands lifted to the sky. Dance. I will dance in your kindness and claim every yes and amen. I will be choice. I will be choice. I will shout. I will shout of your goodness forever again and again. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'll never stop, no, I'll never stop, no, nothing can stop my praise. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength.
then you came along and you put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love sing church oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing To show you my weakness, all my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me free. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not one place. You turn bones into arms. 
just worship you tonight, Lord. We welcome you here in this place. And we make room for you, Lord, in our heart, in this place, in this service tonight, Lord. We give you every part, not just one part, but every part of our heart, every single room of our life, we yield to you tonight. Thank you, Jesus.
Because he really does care for you. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He said, come unto me. I love that beginning because that's Jesus' heart cry. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Learn of me, he said, and find that I'm gentle, meek in heart, and you'll find, watch this now, rest in your soul. God wants us to have rest in our soul. So may I challenge you, make room for him tonight. Whatever you're holding back from him, give it up. Whatever room that you're closing off to him, open it up to him because that's when you'll find peace and joy and purpose in that room. And anything that we hold back from God's going to end up a mess. Anything that we give to God will always end up blessed. Will you make room for him? Don't let that swirling mind and all the things of the day and all the things that are going on. God wants to give you rest in your soul. It's the thing that the world cannot emulate. It's called peace. That's why Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Can we give him praise one more time? Come on. Come on, bless his name today. Let go of all of the stuff of the day and just cast your care on the Lord. Father, we bless you today. We honor you. We thank you that we can come unto you and we'll find rest in our souls. We bless you and honor you and praise you. Let everything that we do today magnify the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be seated in the house today. Welcome, everybody. Me and Kristen, we're so glad to be here today. Welcome into the house of the Lord. The Bible tells you and I, Psalms 122.1, I was glad, not mad or sad, but glad when I came into the house of the Lord. Welcome. I'm Pastor Jim. This is my beautiful wife. And so pleased to have you on this Wednesday. Welcome to all of you watching online. If you want to know just a little bit about Joy Church, here it is. We're not religious, always about a relationship with a loving Heavenly Father through His one Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here at Joy Church, not about tradition, always about the Word of the living God. And at Joy Church, made a determination a long time ago, we're not going to endure our Christian life. Me and Amber know we're going to enjoy it. You and I can and we should enjoy our Christian journey together. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to ask Pastor James, my very favorite outreach pastor, he's going to come and officially welcome you tonight as he comes and encourage Pastor James. Good evening, everyone. Welcome on behalf of Pastor Jim and Miss Ann. Can we take a minute and just give God thanks for the best pastor and the best pastor's wife? We love you, Pastor Jim. We want to welcome all of you watching online. We're so glad that you tuned in. If you're anywhere close within driving distance, come on and join us. It's so much better in the room. We also want to take just a minute and welcome all of our first-time guests. So glad you're here. We can't wait to meet you. Can't wait to connect. If you're here tonight and it's your first time, we've got something very special we would like to give you. We've prepared a guest packet. Inside of this guest packet is a free gift to our Cup of Joy Cafe just out in the hallway. Got a lot of great information about the church. We also have a little blue connection card. Looks like this. If you could take 30 seconds, fill that out, turn that back in at the end of the service, that will help us connect with you better in the future. So if you're here tonight as a guest, it's your first time. Again, welcome. Can't wait to meet you. If you would like one of those packets, simply hold your hand up now and our ushers will bring that to you. Come on, family. Let's make them feel so special tonight. Just hold it up high. We also want to take just a moment and let you know about what's going on in our youth ministries with Pastor Rob and Abby. They are the best. 
We have Real Joy Youth going on right now over here in our youth auditorium. If you've got a student, 7th through 12th grade, we encourage you to check that out. And then also, Pastor Ryan and Stephanie, the best kids pastors in the world, right now are ministering to our children. We can give God thanks for our kids pastors and youth pastors. They're down in our children's ministry hallway, and they would love to serve your teens or love to serve your children as well. We want to take just a moment and celebrate giving and generosity. We just came through Easter Resurrection Weekend, and we have so much to be grateful for and so much to be thankful for. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 that each person gave as they purposed in their heart. They gave on purpose. They gave from a purpose, and they gave for a purpose. And that's why we give. We don't give to God because we're just paying off a debt or paying off a bill. We give on purpose. We give for purpose. We give from purpose. And that purpose happened this weekend. The pastor is going to talk to you more about it. But dozens and dozens of people gave their lives to the Lord. Thousands of people were on campus. Thousands more online. This church is making a difference. And you are a part of it. So thank you for being so faithful. Not only here in our community, but we're serving churches in Romania. Guatemala, Jamaica, Brazil, Honduras, Russia. This church, every single month, is sowing into ministries, and the gospel's going forward, and you are a part of it. So thank you, Joy Church. We've made giving here very, very easy. If you're watching on our webpage, just go to joychurch.net slash give. There's a give tab right there on our webpage. We also have an app. On the bottom of the app, there's a give tab, and it'll walk you through some very simple instructions. We have a P.O. box that you see on the screen. You're welcome to mail in your donation as well. And then in just a minute, our ushers are going to serve us here in the room. I just want you to think about that again in 2 Corinthians 9. They gave as they purposed in their heart. We are living a life of purpose, and we're aiming our finances to see people changed and reached, and we are so grateful. Let's pray together, and let's prepare our hearts for giving and worshiping tonight. Father God, we are so thankful. We reflect on everything that you did over Easter Resurrection Weekend. God, we reflect on everything you're doing in this community and in this nation through our pastor and through this ministry. Thank you. The sound of Joy Church is echoing through the nation, and it's spreading the gospel, and we're so grateful. Lord, we pray a blessing over the gift and the giver tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got some great things coming up, some great events. It is really easy for you to get connected. You don't have to sit back and watch us have all the fun. Check out this video. Join us this weekend. Pastor Jim will be beginning a brand new series. It's time to talk. Your marriage will only be as good as you want it to be or as bad as you allow it to be. Have you recently given your life to Jesus? Are you looking to take your next steps in your faith journey? Then our free cross-training class is just for you. This is a three-week class designed especially to help new believers grow in their understanding of the Bible, church, and how you can get better connected and serve here at Joy. You can sign up at guest services or go to joychurch.net slash events. We want to personally invite you to our next Taste of Joy. This is a catered meal right here at Joy Church. It's an awesome way for you to connect with our staff, learn a little bit more about the church, where we're going, where we've been, where you fit in. For more information, just go to joychurch.net and click on the events tab. You'll find all the information to get signed up today. Hey ladies, in these uncertain days that we're in, it is so important that we stay anchored to God and to his word. And we want to help you do that and stay strong in the Lord. So come join us for our final event this year, our spring brunch. This will be a great way to connect with new friends, enjoy a delicious catered brunch, and be encouraged. Because this brunch is catered, we have a firm deadline to register. So be sure to register by Sunday, April 21st. Bring a friend and let's stay anchored together. Hey, Joy Church family. We have got something super cool coming up in April that we want to tell you about. We are bringing back Cameron Babb. We had such a great time with him last time, so we're gonna bring him back for a few events. For the youth, we are having him come in for a special youth event in the landing on Wednesday night. Then on Thursday night, he's gonna join the Joyriders down at Kairos for a special grow night. And then guys, where are my dudes at? We've got Cameron joining us for a special men's event as well on Saturday. 
<laughs> hey, what's up, fellas? It's Pastor Eric. And Pastor Jeremy. Man, we want to tell you about Men's Conference Heart of a Champion. We've got food. We've got fun. We've got fellowship. It's going to be fire. Yeah. That's right. We got games and prizes and maybe a few surprises as well. You can always count on surprises at the men's event. One of those this year being we've got Cameron Babb joining Come us. Come on. Yeah. He's going to tell you how to have the heart of a champion. So make sure you sign up today. Visit our friends at the Connection Desk or get signed up at joychurch.net forward slash events. Hey, make sure you invite a friend. You don't want to miss this because it's going to be fire. fire. And fuego. wonderful things at your church that you can be a part of. Uh, we would be honored to have you be a part of all that God is doing here at Joy. Got some quick pastoral announcements that I do need to make, and I'm excited about what we're going to share with you tonight. Everybody say this weekend. Saturday at 5, Sunday at 11, we're going to be beginning a brand new series called It's Time to Talk. And I absolutely love your marriage will only be as good as you want it to be or as bad as you allow it to be. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you some truths, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're divorced, whether you're remarried, that will help everybody in the house. It's time to talk. Bring somebody Saturday at 5, Sunday at 11. We're going to grow and strengthen our relationships together biblically. Also, we've got a little sweet treat for every single person that comes next weekend and you say, Pastor, you're just doing that to get us to come post-Easter, no question about it. It is one big fishing lure. We do things all the time just to touch the community, just to love on people. We discovered a long time ago if you can meet people's tangible needs, you can open people's spiritual hearts and then you can give them Jesus so much more readily. I want you to know the scripture, Acts 10, 38. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now, in our circles, normally we talk about the healing all that were oppressed of the devil, and we should. Uh, Jesus is still a healer today, and that's one method that he used to attract people to the Lord. But he went about doing good and healing. That word good in the Greek language is literally talking about practical good. Jesus had a spiritual side to his ministry and a practical side to his ministry, and so should we. So we do practical things like give everybody sweet treats just to draw them into the house of God so that they can hear the word of the living God. And so please be a part of that. Come on next week. You're not going to want to miss that at all. I've got really good news for everybody. Would you like to hear good news? This is Joy Church. You're only going to hear good news. Just want you to know, me and Jimmy, we just want to hear good news. So here we go. So thankful to be able to tell you. Uh, last weekend, there were 3,510 people for resurrection services. And the best news of all, 152 people gave their lives to the Lord. You better give God a bigger thanks. So grateful to God. Everybody in the house ought to be rejoicing over that. Your Bible tells you in Luke chapter 15, 10, and 11 that when one sinner repents, the angels in heaven rejoice. So they had 152 parties over the weekend uh, in heaven as a result of what God did here at Joy Church. Guys, 
Uh, look at your pastor. I'm just so proud of you. I'm so proud to be your pastor. I mean that in the right way, in a humble way. I'm just honored to serve you. I think you're wonderful people. We all got together as a big, giant army and team uh, last week, and that's a lot of work. Three services. All three services had overflow. Uh, so many of you served. So many of you helped. I, I wish I could give a list of all the people that did so many things, but invariably that would take us all of Wednesday night, and we'd forget somebody, and then somebody would be mad, and they wouldn't serve next Easter. So a big thanks to anybody that made a difference over the Resurrection Weekend, coming, praying, serving, uh, giving it all matters, and I thank God for all of you. Let me give you one quick example. I don't even know if she's here tonight. She was here last night in the Bible school. Uh, Sherry Stricker. She has a gift of baking. She is a phenomenal uh, uh, baker and just really makes wonderful things, and that's her gift that she gives here at Joy Church. She serves all the time down at Kairos and bakes wonderful things down there, and we get to partake of them on an off, a, a off basis, and they are awesome. And I want you to know, here's what she did on her own volition. She put together uh, Easter baskets, beautiful baked goods in there. No, we can't have everybody doing that because some of you can't cook. <laughs> She's gifted to do that, and so we trust her. She's been doing it a long time. And so she put together all that on her own volition, and they gave out so many of these baskets to different families and people, a lot of folks that were new for the very first time. And this is just Sherry's contribution to the Lord. She's such a difference maker. I could go on and on and on. I thank God for our ushers and our greeters and our praisers. The praisers put in a lot of work. Come on, they did so wonderfully. You guys don't know that you don't see all the work that they put in behind the scenes. They don't just get up there and sing that wonderfully. They really, really, really practice so that they can minister to you well. And I'm just so proud of them. Uh, not for sure, but very likely we'll have to do four services uh, next year. How many know that's a good problem to have? And I'm telling you right now, I did all that without caffeine. And, and, I, and I preached last night at two Bible school classes. I'm preaching tonight. I just put a nickel in the preacher, wind him up and let him go. But the good news is the steroids really, really help. I've let, I have, have had people in the church tell me, you know, Pastor, people have actually asked me, do you really do steroids? And, Folks, that's a joke. Dear me, you people need to get a little sense of humor on your bad self. So I'm so thankful to God. Can we stop for a moment? And just give all glory to God. Come on, give him thanks. <laughs> Father, we give you all the glory. Appreciate you. He uses you, but he gets all the glory. I serve some of the best people in the world, and I am just so proud of all of you making a difference like that. We came together as a team uh, to make a difference. I, I, I minister to a lot of pastors uh, because I have a role in a large ministry where I'm a trustee of a ministerial organization. So I ministered to a lot of pastors and they were blown away by 152 people that gave their lives to the Lord. And I'm so thankful for people like Zach serving, making a difference for the Lord. And I'm so thankful uh, to be a part of that. What a privilege, what an honor. We love, the, me and the Harrisons, we love the outreach that we do here at Joy. So important that we reach out to people. I, I talked to one pastor, I gotta tell you, I was a little bit surprised. He's a good Baptist pastor, good man of God. They don't do altar calls. I thought all Baptists did altar calls. I guess I was wrong about that. But I'm telling you right now, I don't get that. I, I, I love inviting people to Jesus. We're going to feed you as best we possibly can. But one of the best words in the Bible, just like I mentioned a moment ago, is come. And so we always, not on Wednesday, but on Saturday and Sunday, we always give people an opportunity to come to Jesus for the very, very, very first time. And I'm so thankful. Looking at Mike Prude over there who did so much with the flora and the fauna outside. Doesn't it look just so beautiful? All the landscaping looks so sharp. And Mike just does such a phenomenal job. He had those flowers. He did all that beautiful landscaping down at Kairos. He's got a gift. Does he not have a gift? I'm so thankful. I just appreciate you. I'm gonna, I go on and on and on. We better pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. We thank you. 
I pray, Ephesians 1.18, open the eyes of the understanding of your wonderful people tonight. I pray, Father God, Matthew 13.16, give us eyes and ears to see and hear what the Spirit of the living God would say to us directly from your word. And I pray it and say it in the name of my Lord and best friend, Jesus. And if you agree, would you say amen? amen. Tonight, as you know, the first Wednesday of every month, we have what we call our biblical leadership training. And we take truths from the Bible to enhance your leadership. Now, you say, well, Pastor, I'm not a leader. Oh, contraire, my friend. Leadership is one word. It's the word influence. And all of us should be influencers in the kingdom of God. So I'm going to enhance your influence. Whether you're a CEO, I see a CEO right there, or whether you're a pastor, or whether you're a housewife, or whatever you are, I'm telling you right now, we should all be influencers in the kingdom of God. Me and Brandon know that. He's shaking his head. That's exactly right. And I agree with that. Now, I will say I'm, I'm watching closely in my heart because I have some things on my heart that I might want to share with you. I might stop a little bit early in the leadership session and share some things on my heart. So I'm going to follow the Lord as best I can. And if, if I switch gears all of a sudden, be patient with me. Because I always want to follow the Lord, particularly when we're not in a hurry on Wednesday nights. So let's talk about it. We've been in a series. We just began this, I think, a couple months ago, and it's called Multiply. Long subtitle, Model, Recruit, Train, Coach, Empower, and Reproduce. And you only get to do the last one if you're married. <laughs> All right, that didn't go over too well. I'm a little concerned about that. And I want you to know... We're talking about team building, and man, did you exhibit a wonderful team over last weekend. Come on, let's give God thanks one more time. You guys are one of the best teams that I know, and I've been in ministry for 41 years, and I am so proud of you. But this couple had no clue about teamwork. Check it out. Hey, did you find everything? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm just doing a little birthday shopping. Oh, uh, for your husband? Oh, no, we're not together anymore. Oh, hon, I'm so sorry. What happened? Oh, it's okay. I mean, could you live with someone who smokes, drinks, doesn't have a job, and cusses all the time? No, of course not. Yeah. Well, neither could he. Oh, come on, you didn't see it coming. You didn't see it coming. That's not teamwork. <laughs> Let's look at our key verses. That's kind of cute, wasn't it? Come on. Yeah, that was not bad. Let's look at our key verses one more time from 1 John 1, 3, and 4. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship, the Greek word kononia, partnership, common union with us. And truly our fellowship, our kononia is with the Father. In other words, our fellowship begins, all relationships begin on a vertical basis. You know that. You ever been somewhere maybe out of state or out of country, and all of a sudden you meet a believer that you know is a legitimate Christian? You have that union almost immediately because you're both a brother or sister in the Lord. And notice here, and with his son, Jesus Christ, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Here, I want you to understand there's two-way connectivity. Obviously, number one, vertically with God, but then our fellowship should be also with one another. Our partnership, our common union, we should have a really awesome team here because the Bible describes the body of Christ as just that. We're a body with many members. We are a temple with many stones. We are a family with a father, and we're a vine with branches. And all of those descriptions have one thing in common, connectivity. God does not want us to be isolated. God does not want us to just have church on YouTube. Really, he needs you to come together. The Bible tells us that, Hebrews 10, 25. We are to come together the closer it gets to the return of the Lord. You say, well, we can come together over the Internet, not like you can in person. There is a different spirit, a different attitude, a different camaraderie. And what if all of that stuff is eventually shut down? We are going to need one another, and so this is imperative. So let's go back and review a little bit. We'll see if we can get in a little bit of new territory, and then we'll just follow the Lord into some things that you might find interesting. Are you ready? We talked to you about four truths about teams. Number one, continually develop leaders. We do that all the time here. We're always developing leaders. I'm so proud of Pastor Dave and Paula. They do a great job developing leaders. Pastor James is a really good leader builder. 
So proud of them. I'm looking at the Emersons right there. They're leaders and they train leaders. I love those guys. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.2, the Bible says that we're to commit to faithful men and women who shall be able to teach others also. It didn't say that we're to commit to talented people. It said faithful people. That is the number one thing that we look to here in Joy Church is we commit to faithful people, not people that just come right down while I'm teaching. Got her. <laughs> we commit to faith. She had no idea it was right there. She turned around, what, what in the world is that? And her mom and dad are going, hey, there's the preacher right there. <laughs> Second thing we want you to know, number two, clarity. Ever say clarity? Clarity. clarity. Make vision and expectations clear. It's so important that we make vision and expectations clear. Habakkuk chapter 2, 2 through 4. Write the vision down. Make it plain so that others can run with it. We talked to you about number three. Consistency and character and mood. We got to be reliable. How many thank God for people that are consistent in character and mood? Uh, we've all met people. Anybody in the house ever worked for a boss that you didn't know which guy you were going to get, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? Got a couple of people right away. All the staff are raising my, their hand right now. <laughs> well, think about your pastor. I'm not the uh, best guy in the whole world, but I am one consistent guy. I'm steady in my mood. I'm not up and down and all around. I'm the same way at Walmart as I am at church, always shoplifting. I am consistent in character and consistent in mood. I challenge you to be too. Not perfect, but I'm so thankful for Keith. Keith's, Keith's in the back booth. Keith has a phenomenal attitude. Always <laughs> consistent in a wonderful mood and a wonderful attitude. My wife is very, very, very consistent. She is a steady, steady woman of God. And I thank God for her. She's consistent at home, consistent here at church. She's one of the hardest working people that you're ever going to meet. And what a, what a blessing. I'm married up. I'm a trophy husband, and I'm all right with it. You don't need to laugh at that point. That is unnecessary. Let's be consistent in character. And you guys were so consistent over the weekend, and I was so proud of everybody. And you just have great attitudes. You had smiles on your face. God was just so, so faithful. Just, well, the weather was wonderful. Everybody had an opportunity to partake of all the facilities here. I know everything that we do is just one big, giant fishing lure for God. I love it. And then the fourth thing that we talked to you about is credit. Express lots of public credit for faithfulness. What was they doing just a moment ago? Doing just that was giving everybody credit. So many people were so faithful in the house of God last weekend. And can you give yourselves one more big encouragement? Wow. I was so blessed uh, by your faithfulness. And I'm so thankful to God for people like Ronnie. There's Ronnie and Bob right back there. Ronnie does so much. Some that you see, most that you don't. She's the czar of WCBI, World Changers Bible Institute, and she just does so much stuff behind the scenes, uh, more than you can ever imagine. She does so much stuff in the office. We're so thankful to God. Uh, Ronnie and Bob met here at Joy Church, and they met at World Changers Bible Institute. That's why I love. That's why she's giving back. She's paying for it. She said, well, I got my husband at the Bible school, so I might as well serve there. <laughs> and listen, if you're single in the house of God, come to World Changers Bible Institute. You don't even have to care about the class. Just come to meet your mate. <laughs> it's better than FarmersOnly.com, I can tell you that right now. BibleSchoolStudents.com. Ooh, she's hot. Ooh, he's a hunk. And they're on the Bible, hey, hey. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Me and Ronnie, we're here for you. <laughs> so proud of them. I really, really am. So give lots of public credit. Just, just, that's what leaders do. They don't take it to themselves. They just give it away. And I'm just so proud of you. I just love you. Now let's talk about, now that we've talked, we reviewed there, we'll catch up here in our next thought. Let's talk about truths towards team building. Number one, if you're going to build teams, you've got to model it. I do it. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow me as I follow the Lord. I encourage you to follow me as I follow the Lord. The moment I don't follow the Lord, please don't follow me because your eyes should always be on the Lord. But Paul said, follow me as I follow. Follow the Lord. And please, as I mentioned, I, I encourage you to do that as long as I'm following the Lord. But I, I say this all the time. I'm just unoffendable. And here's what I mean. I remember many years ago, 
uh, when we first started out World Changes Bible Institute, a.k.a. Christian Dating Mingle. <laughs> Uh, when we first started at World Changers Bible Institute, um, we started our headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I remember, of course, I, I would travel and minister, but every travel minister, when they're home, should have a local church where they go and their family can go and grow. And I believe that for every travel minister should have that. And so we found a church and we did our homework. We prayed about it. We took our team there. And when we were in town, that's where we went to as a church. We connected with the pastor, got to know him and meet him. We were friends. And re really, we did all of our homework on that church. So anyway, the pastor ends up uh, committing adultery. He confessed it to me and my wife first so that we could help restore him and his wife. And it was an awful thing. To make a long story short, he never fully went through the restoration process. Somehow, hornswoggled, I don't really know what hornswoggle means, but in the Greek language, somehow he hornswoggled that church into his name only. I don't know how he did it. And then he sold the church building and took the proceeds from the church building and bought a bar with it. And I don't mean salad bar, don't mean crow bar, I mean bar bar. I mean bar bar. <laughs> how many understand what I'm talking about? Now, you think, Pastor, did you get offended? Not at all. It was awful what he did. Horrible what he did. I would never, ever trust that man again. But my eyes aren't on pastors. My eyes are on Jesus. Always have been, always will be. Look at your pastor. Never once crossed my mind that I would not go back to a local church because I no longer trust pastors and they're all out to get me. That never once crossed my mind. I just figured I'm not ever going to go back to his because <laughs> he's a mess. But there are lots of planes that land safely and haven't crashed. So get your eyes off of people. Get your eyes on the Lord. Follow people as they follow the Lord. But when they stop following the Lord, you keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't care who backslides or who's not. I'm going on with the Lord. My eyes are on him. I cannot be offended. I hate what that guy did. That was awful and horrible, and, 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 uh, and I can give you lots of adjectives about that. But my eyes are not on him, and I am not going to allow some turkey to get me off the Word of God and to get me off my walk with God. And so many times we allow hypocrites to do that, and if you're allowing a hypocrite to keep you from God, then a hypocrite is closer to God than you are. Think of it that way. Thank you for enthusiasm. So model it. I do it. Second thing we need to talk about, number two, is recruit. Ever say recruit? recruit? Choose people to do it with you. If you're going to build teams, if you're going to multiply, recruit. Choose people to do it with you. And look for 2 Timothy 2, 2, as I just mentioned, faithful people. Choose people to do it with you. I did that a long time ago. We just have been building ever since. Recruit. Choose people to do it. And look for faithful people. We build leaders all the time here, and we're absolutely committed to doing that. We're doing it right now. Third thing, or let me talk to you a little bit about that. Let me give you some thoughts about that. When you're recruiting folks, number one, look for potential value. See the oak tree, not the acorn. Now, they have to have a modicum of faithfulness, but I look for possibilities. A lot of times, I'll see a leader in people that they don't see themselves, and I try to call it out of you. Like, I, I look, I caught eyes over there with Derry Plummer. Derry Plummer is such a leader here. She is such a leader. And even if you're lactose intolerant, that's the dairy that you can always have. She is a blessing, and she is a leader, and I am just so proud of her. I just really am. And again, I'm, there's so many folks on the praise team, like the Smiths and on and on, the Wrights, just so proud of, and Brandon. Brandon does a phenomenal job. I'm just... DJ's listening. He's don't you love our guitarist up there? He oh, he's just a wonderful man of God. He used to play with um, Tarian Wells or somebody like that. I don't know all these people. Torin Wells. My wife corrects me on all that kind of thing. I, I have no idea. But I'm. She, he listen. He's just been faithful, and now he's making a difference for the Lord. A lot of times people don't see that oak tree, but oh boy, I do. And I look for it. I thank God. I think of Carrie. Carrie's one of our best ushers, one of our leaders here, did a phenomenal job last weekend. 
so thankful for Carrie. Oh, my goodness, he just did. He's so steady, and he's just a mature man of God, and I love his kids. They're just all, they've got those big old smiles. Carrie Knight has been faithful here for a long, long time. He is a knight in shining armor. And Andrea said, Amen. I'm so thankful right here, right on the second row. Come on, my favorite Watertonian. Come on, Eric. He's got to put up with so much. I make so many jokes about Watertown. He's got to put up with it over and over and over again. He does with a smile on his face. And I just thank God for him. He's one of our most faithful ushers. He always has a phenomenal attitude. Just makes a huge difference here in the house of God. I love him. I absolutely love him. So look for potential value. Number two, the second thing you need to look for is positive value. They've got an I can do it attitude. I mentioned a moment ago Keith Faust. He is the king of an I can do it attitude. I love his attitude. It's phenomenal. I'm looking at Amber back there. Amber has an I can do it attitude if I ever saw it. She's smiling back there, shaking her head, going, you know why I am. I love that attitude. I can have an. I, I can't stand negative Nellies. It's just not not anybody I want to hang around. I love people. Philippians four thirteen. I can't do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I love Pastor. I don't. That's Keith to a T. Pastor, I don't know how to do it, but I'll find out. There's got to be a YouTube video on it. Video on it somewhere. I, I'll, you know, do it at home. And he just has a phenomenal attitude. I love phenomenal attitudes. Pastor Rob, Pastor Ryan, they've got phenomenal attitudes. <laughs> Look for that positive value. Third thing, when you're looking for leaders, personal value. Are they genuine and a consistent follower of Christ in their personal life? Oh, my goodness, I get so tired of, of, of all the hokey. I want you to know I thank God for people that are genuine. We have a lot of folks here that are imperfect but genuine. If you're, if you're a genuine believer, come on, lift your hand. Say, that's me. I'm a genuine. If you're just a dirty, low-down <laughs> deceiver, come on. <laughs> oh, thank God we didn't have anybody raising their hand. Like I think of Nate. Where I see Nate? Uh, Nate Hoffman. Where's Nate? I saw Nate. Nate's so genuine. Is that his dad next to him? Is that dad? I, so hard, you guys don't understand. I try to see everybody, but these bright lights are always shining in my face. I'm, every sermon is like the Damascus Road experience. <laughs> I'm like, you know, so please, I, I try. And sometimes I think it's this person. And sometimes, you know, on the weekends, when the, the ushers, they help me find the people that raise their hand to give their life to Christ because I can't always see everybody that's raising their hand. And that's why I don't say, thank you, ma'am, or thank you, sir, always, because I don't know sometimes if it's a sir or a ma'am, and I, and I don't want to, I don't want to mess that up. This culture's already kind of confused about that. <laughs> so we don't want to add to it. We're looking for genuine and consistent followers of Jesus Christ, like the Hoffman brothers over there. I'm so thankful for them. They exemplify that. Eric does a phenomenal job leading the Joy to Mo team and all that. Just phenomenal. <laughs> Looking at the Fosters. The Fosters have just done such a great job. Clean team and on and on and on. You should see their children, the Foster children. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Me and Chris are the only two people in the whole church. Chris Townsend that got that joke. Fourth thing that we're talking about, number four, is productive value. Faithfulness is revealed in fruitfulness. I love this Greek phrase, they consistently get her done. In other words, you get it done. You're, you're, you're not just showing up, but you're getting it done. You're reliable. You can, you can, you can, you're making a difference for the Lord. I just love, those are the four kind of people that I'm always looking for when we're building teams. Helping anybody. Should I stop right there, Miss Ann, and turn corners? She wants me to. All right, I'm going to stop right there and turn the corner. Can I? I'm going to anyway. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I just had this on my heart. Now, now let me. That, that's a, we've been talking about leadership, and so I want to give you a little bit of leadership. But that's, that's the team that I'm, I'm looking for right here at Joy Church. We, I'm challenging everybody to step up and be that team. But this has been on my heart a little bit. You're, you, one thing that as your pastor, you know how much I love you. And you know, as a pastor, my job, one of my jobs is to protect the flock and, and to keep, you know, junk out and, and to keep you from being hurt and, and, and you know, keep, 
the nonsense from entering in and certain leaven from entering in. And you, you know, there's so much. I can't just chase current events of the day or every nut on YouTube because that's, there's too much of that. It would take me off the Bible, and then you'd have, literally, the devil would be the one that's leading your sermons instead of the Holy Spirit. So we don't do that. But from time to time, not out of frustration, but out of inspiration, I'll talk to you about some things. I'll, I, I call it pastoring. Some of you may call it pestering. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> but I think this is going to help everybody in the house. I think this will uh, encourage everybody in 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 a very significant way. So I'm just going to kind of speak from my heart. And, and, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18 and verse 4, the Bible says uh, that a man's well is as deep waters and his words are as a flowing wellspring of wisdom. I've been ministering 41 years, so I, kinda, I got a pretty deep well. And so I'm going to kind of talk to you from my well a little bit and pastor you a little bit and protect you a little bit and help you a little bit and encourage you a little bit. Sound good? Direct you a little bit, balance you. One thing about this church, we're always going to keep you balanced. We're not going to let you get weird. So <laughs> looking at some of you, I'm going to have my work cut out for me. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Monday's eclipse. <laughs> Are you interested? Now, let me help you balance everything out and, and make sure that you don't get weird. And here's what I mean. Uh, there, I saw this just today. And there, there was a guy that's put out a video. It's been running now for quite some time or, you know, a number of days. And look at your pastor. 3.3 million views. 3.3 million views. Now, what does that tell me? And that's just one. I've seen some of the other ones on TikTok and so forth um, that have uh, over a million views. There are millions and millions and millions of people that are involved in these kind of things. And I'm sure if I don't, don't raise your hand. And I'm sure if I took a poll here, some of you have been highly involved in these kind of things. Some of you have way too much time on your hands. <laughs> But what you don't know uh, about this gentleman is, I was telling the guys back, he, he not too long ago got out of jail. And he got out of jail for milking people that um, followed him um, for $3.3 million, particularly elderly people. Wow. Now you say, well, how can, how can this be? Listen to me. If you, this, 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 if you don't get anything out of this, then get this, because this will be how you can start your YouTube channel and make it really big really quick, <laughs> right? This will help you right off, right off the bat. All you got to do is talk about some sort of event that's happening as far as political or a, a, something in the skies or whatever. Equate it to the future. Equate it to uh, the apocalyptic, apocalyptic times or write a book about it. And you're going to make a zillion dollars. And you know why? Because there is a market for it. And unfortunately, unscrupulous Christians know that. Now, I'm not telling you everybody. I know some dear people that write about the end times that are, their hearts are right and pure. And we talk about the end times from time to time. And so I'm not talking about that with everybody. But I'm telling you there is a market for anything that is apocalyptic. People have itching ears. And they want to hear. And, and look at your pastor. They want to know about the future. Yeah. Right. And so it's unfortunately, we've turned the Internet into our own Christian uh, soothsaying and divination and horoscope. And it's in the name of the Lord. Rather than if you if, listen to me, if you want to know the future, it's really quite simple. You have the Bible. And you have the spirit of the living God, John 16 and 13, that will guide you into all truth. And watch this, show you things to come. So please, ladies and gentlemen, we're letting other people on YouTube do our homework for us because it's easier. So let me back into this and let me help you out a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep you nice and balanced. Um, first, let me talk to you a little bit. Yes, there are some things... Uh, about eclipse 
in the Word of God and how it can signify judgment. You know, I'm sure you've heard with the eclipse on Monday, it, you know, it's supposed to have this big X, but what you don't know, there's been 12 of the same, same kind of eclipses within the in 20th century, 12 of them. None of them have indicated judgment. So please, yeah, but this is different because it's going through uh, Nineveh, and that's the big thing right now, Nineveh and, and Jonah, and I'm gonna get to that in just a minute, and, then the, and uh, that's a sign. First of all, it's a 115 mile, mile swath that this thing covers. And they say there's eight of them, but that's just not true. There's about two of them. The others are actually outside the swath, but you've got to make it happen to make it more interesting. The swath also covers a place, uh, a little town, town called Rapture. <clears throat> so there are some folks predicting that on Monday, it's going to be the Rapture. There are other people predicting, and I kid you not, it's, and they have hundreds of thousands of views, folks. So this is not just, this is why I'm talking about it. You put all of these folks together, there's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of views that are occurring in this. So I have to address it to some degree because I care about you and I don't want you to be scared or panic or do something dumb. Like not amen me. <laughs> Um, this is all to be interesting as we walk through this, Pastor Dave. I'm excited about this. It also happens to go through Santa Claus, Indiana. I, I kid you not. Oh, yeah, it goes through Santa. So maybe the judgment of God <clears throat> is on you parents that taught your kid Santa Claus <laughs> instead of Jesus. You see how ridiculous it can be? Well, Pastor, wait a minute now. Aren't there some eclipses and, that have to do with judgment in the Bible? Yeah, oh, no question. Exodus chapter 10, there appears to be some sort of, it, we don't know fully if it's an eclipse, but there appears to be certainly one of the plagues of judgment that came on the Egyptians was darkness. No question. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 13, you can see darkness again as some sort of judgment, no question. In Matthew 27, verse 45, we see Jesus crucified, and it was dark for a number of hours, and that was certainly a sign of judgment. God's judgment was on our Lord and, of course, the people for rejecting him. When I say God's judgment, he was bearing our sin. You understand that. And in Revelation chapter 8 and Revelation 13, you can also see periods of darkness that also indicate judgment. Now, are those eclipses? Don't know. Could they be? Maybe. That's some possibility. So I, I want you to understand that. And I also am very aware of scriptures. And please don't come up to me afterwards and tell me your favorite scripture uh, about whatever thing, because I'm going to embarrass you. Because I know all the scriptures that you're going to say. And I am fully aware of Luke chapter 21, where Jesus talked about in verse 11 and Verses 25 through 28, he talked about that there'll be signs in the stars and the sun and the moon dark. I'm fully aware of that. And so there is an element where you and I should see some of those things and we should pray about them and we should see, okay, I, I, I get it. Now, I've heard people talk about all the way from Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, where the Bible says that God put lights in the firmament. You know, the firmament was what uh, kept was like a covering that kept the, the earth and the, and the heaven apart. And the Bible says God put lights in the firmament. But the Bible says he did that so that it would show night and day and mark seasons and times. And, and that's what it was for. And in other words, but they've taken that and twisted that scripture and that everything is supposed to, everything in the sign, all these things in the scar, stars are signs. No, and they'll use scripture like Psalms 19 and verse 1 where the Bible says that the heavens declare God's handiwork. Listen, guys, what creation shows is that there is a creator. It is, it is Romans chapter 1 gave the gift to all sinners that because there is a painting, there must be a painter. Because there is a building, there must be a builder. Because there is creation, there must be a creator. The gift to all sinners in Colossians chapter 2 is our conscience. Every sinner has a conscience. Every one of them, they have a conscience. 
I've never, ever, ever, I've talked to complete atheists, and they say, oh, well, conscience is societally shaped. Of course, the society has an ability to shape your conscience somewhat. But I've never, okay, um, is it right to rape children? Well, no, of course not. Well, you have a conscience. And that's in every society, everywhere. God gave you a gift. Now, you may bury that conscience, but God gave you a gift of creation to show there's a creator. He gave you a gift of a conscience to show you that his laws are written in your heart. And I want you to know that, but not everything that happens in the sky is a sign from God. Well, yeah, but, but um, the Magi followed a star to find the Lord, and on and on we go with all that kind of stuff. And I understand that as well, but you have to understand we are no longer in the old covenant. We're in the new covenant. And I, and I want you to understand there's a huge difference there. At, at the time which the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the Jews became a nation, Israel, God has certainly established Old Testament prophets to lead that country and to lead that people. No question about it. It was Isaiah, Jeremiah, on and on and on and on. Go to the prophets. And, and I fully understand that, and you do too. But there, and, and I also want to say that there was a priestly understanding, you, you, and I don't want to get too deep for everybody, but you know, the high priest would use the urine and the thummim and the ephod in order to be able to hear from God. Do you know what that is? Probably not. I could tell you by those looks. I don't want to get too deep on you, but it was a way God, God would use, it was kind of like he would use um, uh, stones so that they could hear from God because they could not be led by God from the inside out. Do you remember that? So that was sanctioned by God, but there are certain things that were not sanctioned by God. Uh, Luke chapter, or Luke, Leviticus, Leviticus, I'm quoting Leviticus. Leviticus 19 and verse 26, the Bible forbids soothsaying and divination. Forbids that. Well, it, the, the, one, the one that was allowed was the ephod and the urine and the thummim by the high priest. It would, it was, uh, it, what shows you, though, that that stopped, you remember the last time they did that? They did that in Acts chapter 1 when Judas hung himself, and they're trying to find the 12th apostle. They picked Matthias, not Brandon. <laughs> they picked Matthias. And they cast lots for them. That's the urine and the thumbin. They cast lots for them. And you never hear from that apostle again because they use an Old Testament means to pick a New Testament apostle. And that's why I believe that Saul then became Paul, became the 12th apostle, because God picked him in a new covenant, not in an old covenant way. Does that make sense? So I'm walking you through this. But I want you to think about this because think of the term divination. The word divination has its root in it's divine-like. It feels divine. You remember in Acts 16 and verse 16, the woman, I'm sorry, I just have this big Rolodex in my heart, so I know I'm all over, but the, all of these things are, are obviously in the Bible. Remember Acts 16 and verse 16 where the Bible says that woman had a spirit of divination? She was a fortune teller. And divination, let me tell you what modern-day divination is. Crazy eight ball, Ouija board, horoscope. That's all modern-day divination. And no, look, at, look at your pastor. This may surprise some of you, and it shouldn't. No Christian should be dabbling in that. Amen. Oh, no, no, no. If you, and if that's, if that's a what to you, I'm so glad that you heard that for the first time. Because you'll open yourself up to the demonic. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Ouija board will work, work fine for you because you're allowing demon spirits to be involved in your life. Who got quiet in the Ouija board house? <laughs> it's divination, folks. And it's, w w what is that? It's random ways where you're trying to hear from God. It's random. It's, it, it's just in a crazy way. It's not how God intended you to be to find direction. You don't need to get your palm read. Right. Tea leaves. All of that is all nonsense and all forbidden in Scripture and will open you up to the demonic. 
helping anybody. So please stay a million miles away from that. But now listen to me. Here's what's happening now on YouTube. It's now become a Christian divination. Because what they're doing, and, I, and I, I'm seeing this over and over and over, that's what this guy did on his video that just got out of jail and printed, did that whole thing. And, and, and most of what these other people are doing. It's become a form of Christian divination. And there, there are so many things. They're picking random things. I know so many of these people, and they have a lot of renown, unfortunately. And they'll take uh, the certain numbers. Now, now, in the Bible, folks, there are certain things numerically that do have some meaning to it. Seven is the number of completion. I get it. There, uh, Forty seems to be a number of a generation from the Bible. Twelve is the number of the apostles and the twelve tribes of Israel, and there's some uniformity there. But not everything means something. Very, very little. Six, six, six means something. It's the number of man. I get it. But if you're not cautious and you take that too far, because the Bible just talks about it, yay much. But if you talk about it a lot of much, you'll get into numerology. Human, numerology is a form of divination. Tarot cards. Not every number means something. And what these people are doing, they've, they, listen to me, they're running things through computers. And they're saying, well, see, that means this, and this number means that, and when you run this, it, this shows up 71 times, and it's all crazy. Look at me, look at me, look at me. The Bible has no secret code in it. The Bible has no, it's not the blood moons, or, or not this, or not that. You, you say, well, we had, we had one of these eclipses seven years ago. And now there's other people, by the way, that say that Monday's going to be the rapture, and then there's other people saying that Monday begins the tribulation period. They're all over the place, millions of views, millions of views. They're also saying it was six months, six, six years, six months, and six days since the last eclipse, and so now we're going to begin the tribulation period, and the Antichrist will show up. This is all hocus pocus. It's nonsense. It's Christian divination and you don't even realize that there's no random things in the bible there the bible it was written in koine greek in the new covenant the septuagint which is the oldest form of, you know, takes it all the way back though is koine greek koine means common the reason it was written in common greek and not high level greek because god wanted the common man to understand it even the Hebrew language was not written in a high Hebrew. It was written in basic Hebrew so the common man could understand it. And anybody that comes along and says, I have a special revelation, like Joseph Smith did, or on and on and on. I have a special revelation, and there, it, if, if you have these numbers here, and, and this, and that, and, and if you run a computer thing for it, it spells out this and that and the other, and I have a certain, uh, the, and, or an angel came and told me, those are all warning signs. This is modern-day Gnosticism. You know what Gnosticism is? Gnostics, it comes from the Greek word gnosis, which means people that think they know it all, and they have a secret level of information that no one knows but me. Those are danger signs. Those occurred in the Bible days and tried to get all kinds of people into error. Those are danger signs and warning signs. Look at your pastor. The Bible is written straightforward. I've got plenty to do with just studying it without trying to figure out if it has a code or if it has Paleo Hebrew. If you just, just read the Bible, it'll tell you how to be a good husband and be a good dad and steward your finances and be a soul winner and disciple people and, and pray for the sick. It'll tell you how to feed the poor and you'll have plenty to do without getting on YouTube and getting into divination. Because that's what's happening. Now, now, so we had that eclipse seven years ago. And we had, it was here more in Nashville. And I've gone through a number. I was in Guatemala with a total eclipse. And it was, it was cool because it got really dark and all the nocturnal animals came out and all the nocturnal insects came out. And they, it was cool. But it wasn't judgment. It was just cool. Now, you say, well, you know, and, and seven years ago, we had the eclipse here in Nashville. It was real big. We had a guy who came all the way from Buffalo. 
And he ran into our offices during the day, and I, he was so scared because of the eclipse. She says, I got to repent and turn to Jesus. We're like, cool. <laughs> so I'm all for anybody that repents and turns to Jesus because they're scared. I'm all for anything that will allow you to legitimately do that. But that doesn't mean seven years ago that there was some special meaning to it. Just mean that that guy bought into it. Well, now, Pastor, wait a minute. What about uh, Matthew chapter 12, 38 and 42? First of all, do you even know what Matthew chapter 12, 38 to 42 says? Because I do, and it talks about Jesus saying an evil generation, an evil and adulterous generation seeks a sign, but there will be no sign given to it but of the prophet Jonah. Now, here's what they're saying, that this, there was a, an eclipse back then in Jonah's day. You can't prove that. You cannot prove that. That's not physically provable. And, there, it's now, and we're also under this constellation that looks like a whale. You guys, you guys, I, I wish I was joking. 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 And, and so Jesus said there will be no sign given to that generation except the sign of Jonah, because the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, just like Jonah was in the belly of the whale, Matthew 12 and verse 40. And what, what, what does that mean? That means this, you don't seek a sign. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks a sign. You don't seek it. Jesus said, the sign that you're going to get is me. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to bear your sins, and if, if I'm going to be raised from the dead, and you need to repent and put your trust in him. You don't need an eclipse or a whale constellation to tell you that. That's been told you for 2,000 years. Amen. Now, whatever the impetus is for you to repent and give your life to Jesus, I'm all for it. But I want to say, well, what's going to happen Monday? I, I, folks, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, I think it's probably going to be cool. It'll probably, probably be like Y2K. You've got, and if it, you know, who knows? I have no clue. There, I, I know this. I know millions of people are converging on various areas, and so it may put a stressor on this and that and the other, and people are stupid. <laughs> so m weird things may happen because of people, and they're stupid. So a little bit, a couple gallons of water, a couple cans of tuna, you'll be fine. <laughs> I, I, and listen, and, and, if, and, and if, if Jesus does happen to come back on Monday, I'll, I'll repent to you on Monday in heaven. But he won't. Because Matthew 24, verse 36, no man knows the day or the hour. You won't. Not coming back on Monday. No, again, could something happen? I, sure, sure, something could happen. But what I don't want you to do is panic, and what I want, don't want you to do is overblow things. And I'm fully aware that there, we need to pay attention to Jesus' signs of the last times in Luke 21. And I do that, and you do that. And I do believe we're in very interesting times. No question about it. But this is more likely to be Y2K than it is Big Judgment Day. Does that make sense? Anybody remember why? Anybody old enough to remember Y2K? Man, I, I, had, he, uh, I, had, a, I had a, I had a, I have a brother-in-law that I love very much. Good man of God. He bought into the fear. Bought, started buying tribulation beans and and on and on and on. And I kid you not. And he was going to go out in the middle of nowhere and buy a farm. And, and move his whole family out to a farm because he's thinking this is the start of the end of the world. And I had sat down with him at a pizza place, I'll never forget, and I talked to him, I think, for four to six hours, something like that, and I walked him through the entire book of Revelation, the whole book of Revelation, and I showed him this is not going to happen. This is, Y2K is not the thing. This hasn't happened. This needs to happen, and this needs to happen. We're not there yet. Don't buy the farm. Or kick the bucket. <laughs> and I was, thank God, I mean, he was going to take his whole family and do that, and he decided not to. And I'm so glad he listened to me, because Y2K was a nothing burger. 
that probably what's going to happen. But if it's a little something burger, you'll get through it fine. And we'll, we'll get through it together. Does that, that make sense? Again, people are crazy. You know, I'm, I'm always just take things in a wise way and just try to stay very balanced. And I try to keep you real balanced. Helping anybody? Now, now let me, let me help you understand this real clearly. Because I, I want you to get this more than anything. And I don't, I don't want you to get into a ditch. I want you to, because there's going to be more of this stuff. Uh, and, and the internet has just opened it up. I just, mm. as a pastor, it, it just grieves my heart because I just care very much about you. And I don't, I don't want you to be scared. And I don't want you to do silly things. And I don't want you to hurt your family over silly things. And I, and I don't want you to go do like what my brother-in-law almost did. And, and folks, again, there are, it looks like the times are getting more interesting and the times are getting more challenging and persecution is rat ratcheting up and the darkness is getting darker and the light is getting lighter. And I agree with all of that. It looks like there's not, you know, things aren't getting better, they're getting worse. And I, but I'm telling you this, the light's going to shine brighter and brighter and brighter in this house and we're going to stay focused on the right thing. So I don't want you to get into divination where it's random stuff. Anything that you find, the numbers mean something. There's a random code in the Bible. I have a special revelation that nobody else has. I, you know me. I'm someone that gets into the Greek. So for me to say this, you know, I care enough about you. I get into the Greek because it helps you. But that doesn't mean I have some special revelation where I can reinterpret the Bible. That's why I always tell people that you, you, if you haven't studied the Greek, don't turn an apple tree into a pear tree. Just because your pastor knows some Greek, don't you try to be an expert where you have no expertise. So I, you, have, you have, on your Bible app, you've got all kinds of versions that came from Greek scholars that are better at Greek than I am. And so what you want to do is don't get yourself into a ditch where you got this special revelation. Make sure that you understand. Look at about five or six different translations. So some good ones you can trust are the King James, the New King James, the ESB, NASB is a good one. Uh, NIV is, is all right. It's not quite as good because it's translated sentence by sentence instead of uh, word by word. But it'll help you understand some things pretty well. Amplified Classics, pretty good. It's a, not a translation. It's a paraphrase, but it's a paraphrase based on the Greek. But if you look about five or six of those babies, you'll know exactly what the Bible is meaning to say. You, 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 and no, if, see, that's where I struggle with some of these folks that are scholars, and they'll go, well, okay, th that Greek word means this, and I'll Greek it out myself, and I'll look at about 20 different translations, and nowhere is it ever translated that. And I go, doesn't mean that. That's not what it means. That is not what it means. And you have to be brave enough to go, nope. If it's never translated that in the Bible, that's not what it means. It may have meant something like that at the time, but that's not what the Spirit of God is trying to get across to us. Because right. somewhere, somehow, one of the scholars would have said that's what it means. And if none of them say that, it's not what it means. And you have to know that. So don't, get in, don't be involved in Paleo-Hebrew. That's the other thing now. Where everything, all of the linguistics, you know, every letter used to come from a picture. Listen, all of linguistics develop that way. Every single language you understand originally was pictorial that developed into a letter, which developed into a word, which developed into a dialect. That's how all dialects began. But there is no Paleo-Hebrew um, that is biblical, where I, I watch all these people, well, that letter means that, and that letter paints a picture of a word, and then they come up with some completely different thing. That is divination, a Christian form of it where you're taking things that are random and you're taking things that like it, you might as well just have a crazy eight ball. <laughs> don't don't, don't involve, your, involve yourself into that. You don't need to get into a Christian horoscope where you've got to see this quote unquote prophet. I remember when there was, a, you've got prophets on this hand, now they're everywhere. And there are 12, it's like Dewey Hauser the prophet. 
And, 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 and don't, don't get into a thing where you can't miss a day of the prophet on thus and thus show because you, you, you'll miss out on whatever he's telling you. That's just lazy Christianity. You're letting some doofus do studying for you. Get in the Bible for yourself. Go to church. Be a man or woman of God. Helping anybody. So here's what I want to say, and I want to, I want to put it this way. Don't, don't put that last thought up, but let me just let me help you with this. In Matthew 24, you know I've talked a good bit about that. That Jesus talks about the signs of the last times. Earthquakes, famines, pestilences, deception. Remember, Matthew 24, 4, that's the number one sign, deception. So that makes sense why all this crazy stuff is on YouTube. 3.3 million people. Dear me. And so, uh, please, deception is a huge thing. And, and there are some signs in the sky, Luke 21, 11, Luke 21, uh, 25. I get it. I totally understand. So we should pay attention to the signs. But you know that, that what Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 and 25 is one sermon. You wear that. It's called the Olivet Discourse. It's where he spoke on the Mount of Olives. The Olivet Discourse. So one sermon, just like the Sermon on the Mount is, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Matthew 24 and 25 is one sermon. So don't just stop in Matthew 24. Jesus talks about all the signs in Matthew chapter 24. And in, I won't get too deep. But anyway, he talks about all the signs in Matthew chapter 24. And then he gets in, the, in things that will happen in the tribulation period. And that's all of Matthew 24. And then at the end of Matthew 24, he talks about, okay, now watch and pray because don't let this happen to you unaware. It's like sleeping in church. Yeah. <laughs> I woke some of you up right there. Okay. Now, now. But then, then, here's what it is in Matthew 25. And it's one sermon. So don't forget, this is all one message. Now he goes right into, in Matthew 25, the parable. And you know what parables are. It's a Greek word, parabole. Parabole, para, come alongside. Bole means to throw down. Come alongside and throw down. A parable was Jesus coming alongside a spiritual truth, throwing down a story by the side of that spiritual truth so that you could easily understand it with a story. I love Jesus. He took complicated things and made them simple. He just talked to regular people. So, okay, you don't get that? Let me talk to you about fishing. Let me talk to you about uh, sowing seeds. Let me talk to you about a mustard seed. Let me talk to you about being a servant. Let me talk to you. Bring, I'll use this child as an example. He used parables all the time. So Matthew 25 he tells the parable of the ten virgins, the five wise and five foolish. Remember that? And the whole parable there is to be ready. That you don't know when the Son of Man is going to come, so be ready. Have, your, have oil in your lamp and have your wick burning. Be ready. What's the next parable? The next parable is the parable of the talents. Five talent man, two talent man, one talent man. Remember that? Five talent man produced faithful. Produce another five. Two talent man. Produce faithful. Produce another two. Right. Doubled it. One talent man yeah. got scared. Right. Started becoming a prepper. Right. Started watching all this stuff on YouTube. Right. Guys, I want you to think about this now. Got scared. And because of that, buried his talent in the ground. Put money in the mattress had a gun every three feet in their house just for when the Antichrist comes. I'm ready. If I roll here, here's a gun. If I roll there, here's a gun. There's a gun in my ear, and here's a gun, and here's a gun in my hair, and here's one in my ear. I mean, one will do it. You understand. And again, I'm, listen, I'm all for you having guns. I'm not, we got folks carrying right now. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for that. I'm not talking about that, but I'm talking about a fear where you're afraid of everything, and now you're like the one talent man, and you buried your talent in the ground, and Jesus said, you wicked and slothful servant. Yeah. Right. And then what's the next parable right after that? The next parable is the parable of the sheeps and the goats, where he divides the two. And he talks about in Matthew 25, 35, he said, he said, you visited me, watch us now, when you... I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was, had no clothes, and you gave me clothes. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in jail, and you came and visited me. 
I was a stranger and you took me in. Jesus, when did I do that? When you did it unto the least of these, my brethren. Now, why did Jesus end? With two, he taught this whole thing about here's the signs of the last times, right? And he ended his sermon, with like, much like I do, with stories, parables, that really had one major theme. Okay, now you understand this is the sign of the last times. But don't you get scared. And don't you allow yourself in to become a prepper. You get out there and you be faithful. Yeah. And you work in the pantry and you feed the poor. And you lead people. They led two people to Jesus at the, at the pantry. And you have Easter service <laughs> with Kairos Coffee House. And you have 152 people giving their lives to the Lord right in the middle of that. So the life point that the Lord just gave me, I want you to see, powerful. Matthew 24 gives you the signs of the end times. Matthew 25 gives you the service of the end times. Matthew 24 gives you the features of the end times. Matthew 25 gives you the focus of the end times. Matthew 24 gets you mindful of the end times. Matthew 25 gets you on mission for the end times. Can you, can you, no, come on, can you see that? In other words, okay, you see, if you focus on the signs of the times and all you do is spend your, all your whole life on the phone and the internet profits, right. you're missing the whole thing. Right. You're going to get yourself, here's, Jesus said in Luke 19, 13, occupy until I come. He did not say, be preoccupied until I come. He said, occupy until I come. In other words, don't get isolated and weird and too much time on your hands and we just got this phone in front of you all the time and I'm scared and give me the prophecy and hey, the eclipse and da-da-da-da-da. And there may be some truth to some of this stuff, but it's not worth going down the hole. Yeah. Jesus wants you right in the midst of that to use your time, talent, and treasure for him. He wants you right in the midst of that to feed the poor, to clothe the naked, to visit people that are sick, to welcome in strangers. That's what we did by the droves of reach, all kinds of people that don't know us. We invited them in, let them in here, and let them to the Lord. And I refuse as a pastor to get you caught up in weird stuff because you want something deep and you want a Christian divination. No, no, sir. We're going to discern the times, and we're going to let those remind us we've got to make our life count. Okay, I see famines, I see earthquakes, I see pestilences, I see wars, and rumors of wars, and boy, do I see deception. I get it. I see some stars and signs in the sky. I get it. That reminds me I've got a certain amount of time here, but I'm not going to let that get me weird. I'm not going to let that get me isolated. I'm not going to be out of church watching just online. You need to be with people so you don't get weird. You get weird and you get depressed when you're alone. And then you keep pressing buttons and there's no end. No end to the people that will tell you weird stuff on YouTube. Because they have 3.3 million views and they want your money. And they'll use fear to get it. I'm sorry, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I'm an actual pastor that cares about his people that I serve. I'm really, I'm not mad at you, but I am mad at that. Because that just, I, I just grieves me. That guy, the most people that he milked, $3.3 million, mostly from the elderly. That makes me mad. From the elderly. I mean, my mom is years old. And that makes me mad because I, I would never want someone to hurt her like that. So, folks, again, what's going to happen on Monday? Again, you know, there may be a couple weird things happen. I don't know. You know, I don't know. The Lord hadn't told me anything along those lines. I, you know, it, like I said, you want a couple jugs of water, a couple cans of tuna to get through Monday, have at it. <laughs> Probably it will be nothing. I can tell you one thing for sure. Jesus is not coming back on Monday. So I wish, I know some of you are excited that he might, but <laughs> not coming back on Monday. I don't believe it's the beginning of the tribulation period. I believe <laughs> that we're going to have a little bit of darkness. I believe we'll get to see some cool animals come out. Ooh, look, Bigfoot. <laughs> Please, that's what I'm talking about. 
Please don't be preoccupied with aliens and Bigfoot and Nephilim and all the stuff. Please be preoccupied with the gospel. Be preoccupied with winning souls. Be preoccupied with discipling believers. Be preoccupied with being a great dad. Be preoccupied with being a great mom. Be preoccupied with having character. Be preoccupied with having the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Love and joy and peace and faithfulness and temperance and goodness. Get off your phone every once in a while. Break up with your phone and just be friends. And tell your phone, it's you, not me. <sighs> if none of you feel better, I feel better. I, I, hope, you, I hope you receive that. I, I, there's a lot more I could say about that, and I'm just out of time. But I just wanted to, I want, I want to keep you balanced. And again, folks, I, I, don't, I don't know the future, but I do know the one that holds it. And I do know the Bible tells you and I in Romans chapter 8, 35 through 38, that no matter what comes, things present, or the Bible says things to come, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. <laughs> nothing. Can that help you today? You're not mad at me. I don't want any mean emails from anybody now. I'm just trying to help people. And, and, and please be real cautious. Um, my, my little, so you say, how, do I, how, am I, how can I be discerning, Pastor? Okay, so I'll close with this. Here, just here's how, some little warning signs because this was much like the Gnostics in the time of the New Testament. Nothing's changed. The devil did all the same stuff, just different, different names. Much like the Gnostics of the New Testament. Jesus, or John said in 1 John chapter 4, 1 through 3, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try them, whether they be of God. You gotta try, it's, it's up to you to try the spirits. What, 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 what do you mean? Be real leery of anybody that's got a special revelation. Be real leery of anybody that helps you try to do something random. You okay? Uh, and they have to really bend over backwards and turn like a pretzel to make the connection. I watched this guy's video, and I was laughing the whole time because it's like, dude, you got too much time on your hands because he's connecting this and that and the other and Rapture, Indiana, and Nineveh, and all of this, and the whale, and the number, and 71. And if you do your homework, you see, I mean, I even did my homework. The one thing he said was in there 71 times. It depends on what translation you look at. One was 67, the other one was 68. There were, none of them were 71. Anyway, to, just stay away from people that have a special revelation, heard from an angel. There's a Bible code. There's certain things that the stars are the things that tell us everything. Guys, that's just astrology. That's all it is, just a different form of astrology with a little Christian bow on it. All of those things are divination. They feel God-like, but they're not the way that you're supposed to be led by God. You're led by God, number one, through the Scriptures. Number two, Romans 8, 14, as many are as the children of God. This is a Greek word, huios, means sons of God. Mature sons or daughters of God are led by the Spirit of God. Word of God first, Spirit of God first, second. The Spirit of God will never, ever, ever lead you outside the Bible. His assignment, John 16, 13, is to guide you into all truth. Truth is the Word of God. He won't guide you out of the Bible, guide you into the Bible. So the moment he guides you out of the Bible, you know it wasn't the Spirit of God. It was the Spirit of anchovy pizza. <laughs> Helping anybody in the house today. Do you learn anything tonight? Is that good? Is that, is that enough? I'll shut up. I feel, I feel like I, I, I'm 10 pounds lighter. Because <laughs> as a pastor, you have burdens for your people that you serve. And you want to help them, and you just don't want them to get hurt and to, to run off into silly stuff. Jesus said right in the middle, Matthew 24, 6, don't see to it that you be not troubled. See to it that you be not troubled. And then remember what Jesus said right after that. I'll close with this, which I said already. <laughs> Remember what yeah, I talked about uh, Luke 21, 25, there'll be signs in the stars and so forth. But then right after that, he said in Luke 21, 28, he says, when you see these things begin to happen, lift up your head, change your perspective. 
because your redemption draws nigh. Help you tonight? Okay, I'll shut up. Tell all your friends. Tell them to get on this. This is the YouTube channel they ought to be watching. We don't have 3.3 million views, but I wish, see, see, isn't it crazy when a balanced pastor that loves his wife and loves the Bible and loves his family and loves the people he serves, you know, has thousands of views and then doofuses have millions of views. It ought not be so. So get some doofuses off the doofy YouTube channel and into the balanced YouTube channel. Could I have an amen? Yay. Me and Jimmy liked it. Say it with me as my connection pastor comes, in, unless he's asleep and behind the stage. God loves me as if I am the only person in this world to love.